invite Peter Stjansson, who is the chair of the Nordic Working Group for Global Climate Negotiations, NOAC, to give your reflection on the report that you have hopefully just received. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for inviting me. And uh, I'm pleased to be here and, uh, and uh, call this the ripe fruits of my predecessors. I've been chair of the NOAC for two months, and uh, this is among the pleasant things. <clears throat> that we do, we're doing. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm also uh, a strong, I think, a strong in, in, in interest in uh, in uh, in uh, coincidences. And and uh, I went back to my my archives when I was preparing for this speech because uh, there was something there. I mean, I I don't know whether you are aware, are aware but. This is uh, this month is the 20th uh, anniversary of the assessment and, or the in-depth review process of the Secretariat and UNFC process, and I found the first report, which is actually this one, which is a report from an in-depth review visit that took place. Can you guess where? Here, in Sweden, 20 years ago in March. So so so. And, uh, and uh, that was actually the very first, it was a model. It was uh, a few months ahead of everybody else because uh, the secretary wanted to, to, to do a test case and the Swedes volunteered and, uh, and they went through it and then they learned from it and they built the whole uh, exercise based on, on this particular thing. Um, I'll come back to that uh, later on. But first, a few more words about uh, Nork. I mean, this is, uh, as Haro said, I mean, this is uh, linked to ambition, and uh, NORC has, has, has a quite wide, uh, wide uh, range of, of work uh, under it. I mean, we, you mentioned that you have been involved in at least one other uh, project, uh, which is more understanding uh, a group of negotiating countries, uh, basic. Uh, uh, that's one sort of uh, outreach that we do. I mean, we, we're trying to understand, for example, Africa. We have a project now where others are involved. Uh, we have uh, others being involved in, in, uh, in, in this room in, in projects on equity in, in, in the, in the uh, upcoming, um, or oh, in, in the whole regime. Um, and, and we're trying to, to, um, to highlight issues and, and, and study issues where the Nordics, Nordic countries have a specific competence or a specific interest. Ambition is, is one of them. That's probably not unique to the Nordic countries, but, uh, but it's one of them. Uh, equity is another. We have a parallel, parallel project coming out these days on accounting, quite important. We've spent a lot of resources on the LULUCF, on the land use sector and on forests, because we have, most of us, not, of, not the Danes, but most of us have many trees. Uh, at least per capita. I think we, we have a few thousand each uh, in Norway. Uh, <coughs> and you can find it uh, in specific, st st specific way. And th this is an area of competence where we think the Nordics have something to contribute. Uh, and uh, where we have uh, studies, seminars, uh, workshops, uh, etc. to feed into the broader process. Um, we also have taken uh, quite a strong interest in, uh, in uh, uh, so-called <coughs> flexible mechanisms, uh, which are widely used by some countries under the Kyoto Protocol, um, and, and where many of the, the Nordic countries have been quite active over, over some, some time and also pursued that in the Kyoto regime. And, and uh, we're also quite strong on financial issues under this uh, cooperation uh, in the Nordic situation, so, so, so uh, we are among the bigger donors uh, in the world, and uh, we take an interest in how that money is brought up and how it how it should be spent and, and better ways of, of spending it. Um, we are, uh, in addition to this, uh, I mean, as a group, we are we are uh, actively working. Well, our heads of delegations are working towards uh, other groups to, to to try to understand them during the negotiations. We <coughs> we discuss specific issues with with those who want to to discuss with us, with us, and it's we've been quite active over the last uh, specifically two three years it's the Nordic cooperation sometimes goes like this but but now we're quite quite active I'd say uh, 
Uh, and that sort of has to do with other types of developments like, like the EU and, uh, and other things. And, and now I mean, we, the Nordics have really found each other again and it's quite some enthusiasm in the negotiation to, to work as a group and work towards the other groups to try to find, find solutions. Um, yeah. So this work fits well within our work program and uh, I'm happy that we, we now have, have landed that uh, report. As I said, I, I take an interest in coincidences, so I was asked to come here, I wondered, well, okay, it's because I'm Noak. Well, if you look at this Swedish report, it has five names on the front page, including my own. <laughs> so, because I, uh, I worked for the, for the Climate Change Secretary 20 years ago, and what I did work on <coughs> was exactly setting up the review process under the convention. So, so uh, and I was coordinating this particular review. Uh, of Sweden's, which was the model for, for, for the whole thing. So I'm very thankful that we pay so much attention to, uh, to what uh, is done under that process in, uh, in, in your report and that you recognize that it, it will have a role uh, or should have a role in, in the future. Um, <coughs> maybe one or two words on, on, on how we thought around that process at the time because we, I think that's, that's quite valid uh, still. I mean, we, we, we decided that we, we would go out and we would visit because we, we thought that understanding the different situations in the different countries is, is quite uh, important. And we have, in, in the negotiations, all countries are claiming that we are so special that we have to be <coughs> specially treated. And, and that's uh, probably very much true because there are no other Sweden in the world or Norway or Iceland, or, or Zimbabwe, for that matter. And, and I think it's, it's quite important that, uh, that, that there is better understanding of what sort of differences uh, would have to be accommodated in, 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 a, in a common framework like, like an agreement uh, uh, is. I mean, what, what is the difference on energy structure? What is the dis difference in economic development, on, on agriculture, in forestry? All of these issues, and, and, and uh, in fact, many of these came came through in this uh, first report. Uh, we, uh, even if, uh, as you said, we we uh, we uh, are or were to discuss more uh, procedural issues, we we were able to 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 dive into some of the substantive discussions that, that Sweden had at the time, um, and I think that is that is still uh, something which 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 is possible. I mean, uh, I. I've, participated in the review of the United States uh, last year and, and, and it was still through there that we, we, we could discuss with them and understand what sort of, uh, of, of, of development paths they, they were seeing and, and, and what were the assumptions behind it and uh, we were also allowed to, 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 to write a report of course and, and, and draw out the, the substance of, of that even though I mean, the con we, we had to concentrate and all our recommendation would have to be around whether well, in time, yes, the US were, the Swedes were, Norway was not, <laughs> uh, but uh, my own country. Uh, did we follow all the guidelines uh, fully or just partly? I mean, these things, of, types of things, they, they are easy to, to, to address and they don't cost much for a team to say, well, this is factual and you either delivered on first, before 1st of January or you didn't, but, but you can also write the story again. And in Sweden, uh, 20 years ago, nuclear was an issue. It may still be, be an issue. <laughs> Phase out was a big issue at the time. So you had an energy commission coming up. It was fully possible to discuss this, that and, and reflect it in, in, in this report. At that time, forestry was an issue. Forestry is still an issue. It was possible to discuss these things in the report among these uh, uh, experts and, 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 uh, and uh, put, put it here. So, so it is possible to convey messages of substance even if you have uh, a procedural uh, impact to, 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 to what you're doing. Um, also, I mean, when we composed the teams for this process, uh, we were quite conscious that, that, that this is more of a fact-finding uh, trust building, confidence building uh, exercise than, than anything else. So, so, so we needed a balance. We started off with uh, choosing someone from the US, Bill Hornstein, who is a, a forestry ex expert. He's still active in the field doing forestry. 
we, we chose uh, a Brazilian because they have always been very active in, in, in these processes and taking a strong interest. So we chose someone I just shared an office with some weeks. Some of you may know him. Uh, Miguel is still very active. He may be the real father of the CDM. He's still in the CDM executive board. He's been chair. Uh, he, um, he designed uh, with some others uh, the second uh, the period of the Kyoto Protocol. He was also quite quite instrumental in in, in, in setting up the or in the negotiations in, in the negotiations on the first Kyoto Protocol and up to to, to Marrakesh. So I mean, he stayed on. Uh, the third expert we had was uh, was Katya Simonova, who is now in fact in charge of the whole assessment and the review process in the Secretariat. Uh, she came in completely by coincidence <laughs> for this team because somebody else fell out and they just had to find someone uh, in Eastern Europe and, and they found her and it was paying off some, somehow. Um, the last one on the team, she will write uh, the notes for the president in Paris. <laughs> so, <laughs> Karin uh, she as she always did the last uh, 15 years. So, so, what he writes, he will have written. So, so what he reads in the end, she might have written. So, I mean, there, may, there are some coincidences and some, some lines here that, that are surprising sometimes. Okay, on, on, <coughs> on the review process, I mean, and on, on uh, indices themselves. So, I mean, we, we, it's quite serious stuff to produce an INDC, and even more serious to transform it into an NDC, the final res result, which will be uh, in, in an instrument under the, under the new agreement and then we we went through probably the s second to last uh, step of that in Norway at three o'clock this this morning I wasn't there I was here fortunately uh, before that we had a one-year process uh, of uh, preparation in the EU I think it, it, it's been more I mean the EU succeeded in sending it uh, a few weeks ago now, uh, Switzerland even before, but these are tough processes, it involves all ministries, it often involves uh, consultation with stakeholders, uh, uh, industry, uh, NGOs, uh, others. It often, not always, involves uh, parliaments. Uh, our hurdle last night was in, was in parliament, now it, it needs to be signed off by the government, that's the last thing, it will probably happen tomorrow if it didn't happen today. Um, had contact with them, uh, and this is—I uh, mean, this is not something that you easily change through a review process and uh, and uh, and uh, assessment process, like uh, like like what we've seen how describing. I mean, it's uh, um, it takes time and it takes understanding if it, it is to change. I mean, uh, um, you mentioned fairness. All of us are challenged to to describe how this is fair. And, and uh, those who have been working on it, they, we are trying our best. And, 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 and uh, I think we will have to see what all the other countries are coming up with uh, to, and, and try to understand what they're coming up to before we see any sort of adjustments. But, but there are possibilities for adjustment. The EU says at least 40%. And uh, in the communication from the, from, 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 from the, the Commission, at least, uh, there is indication that maybe the 40 is not carved in stone forever. Uh, and anyway, we're working towards a, uh, an agreement which will have revision clauses. You mentioned cycles of maybe five years or so. So, so these things will will move, but they will move on the basis on, of, of, of of knowledge. Um, yeah. When it comes to I mean, how much better can, can this be, I mean, uh, I recognize a number of the issues that you draw up in the, or you pay attention to in the report, I mean, resource intensiveness, and uh, uh, I mean, we, are, we are spending a lot of resources on reporting or com communicating. Actually, we're not calling it reporting under the convention because that was too hard a word in, in the early 90s, so we're calling it national communications. Uh, that says something about uh, the importance of this and the sensitivities uh, around it. Uh, we are, I mean, we, we, we finished our national communication early last year. 
Uh, we had a review last year, took a lot of resources. We, we had our sixth in-depth review report of Norway, uh, which also, I mean, from our side, takes resources. Writing it from the team takes much more resources. Um, this is just one part of the review, your review process. I mean, you have inventories every year. And the inventories are submitted with some extra information too, so that's already there. Uh, they're all scrutinized by, by technical uh, review teams, experts, uh, um, every year. There are compilation and synthesis uh, information of, 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 of these uh, uh, reports. Those are reports, aren't they? Not communications. Uh, so, 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 so that the parties get figures on how inventories <coughs> are developing. Um, we have in that reviews, uh, you focused on, on, on mitigation. Uh, actually, the reviews always, um, the, the in-depth reviews always addressed all the issues of, uh, of, of the communications and uh, even research and development and, uh, and uh, well, observation of, uh, of, of, of meteorological uh, data and things like that. I mean, uh, uh, but also on means of implementation, like like money. So when I was in the U.S. last year and and, uh, and doing the review, one of my colleagues on the team, uh, she's called she's her name is uh, Thelma Cruz. She used to be state secretary in Brazil, uh, but she was back as a bureaucrat and uh, back on the team. And she scrutinized the the uh, the, uh, the U.S. figures on means of implementation on. ODA and on climate related finance and not only the figures but the way they did things and uh, had meetings with all the relevant authorities. So these things are already going on and they, they, they can be uh, built upon. And, uh, and uh, I can assure you that, uh, that there are many that really take a strong interest in, in, in reviewing also those figures and not only mitigation actions and, and, uh, and, and emissions uh, figures. Uh, let's see. How much? Um, yeah, just just one word or few words on 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 um, the actual um, indices that we've seen so far. Uh, I think I mean <coughs> we we when we went to Lima, we had a naive hope that there would be an exact uh, review. We, we were working on it uh, even, even in Lima, but, but it came clear that it, <coughs> it wasn't possible. And, uh, and, and, and for, for some practical and some uh, uh, reasons of principle, some, some countries were too keen on it. But the practical issue is that the, the, the submission time will be all the way up to, to Paris, I mean, like, like, like you illustrated. So, so there won't be much time to have scrutiny and certainly not equal scrutiny to, to each of the, the countries. So I mean, those who deliver early, like EU, will, will subject themselves to a lot of analysis. Those who are late, there will not be enough time. So, so, so fairness of this process will, will be an issue. Um, so maybe we were a li little bit too naive. But still, I mean, it, the challenge is there. And it's quite important to understand what what countries bring into to, to, to Paris to, to get a good balance of, of, of the agreement and also get a good, good understanding of how the INDCs turn into NDCs and whether they change or not uh, uh, during, during that uh, period. And, uh, and uh, there are limits to what, uh, what, the, what the UN process will do to this. I mean, the Secretariat has been asked to, to come up with a compilation uh, and synthesis, or a synthesis uh, report. They have done this uh, for 20 years, so, so they know how to do this, but, but, but it will have limited analysis on, on, on the substantive uh, items. So, so I think efforts by, by, by uh, analytical organizations to, to address these things uh, will be quite, quite welcome. And I'm pretty sure that there are many quite eager institutions out there that want to do things uh, with finance, maybe sometimes even without funds, and uh, also you'll see the NGOs will, will do this, and this will feed into our process and enhance the, the understanding. <coughs> uh, um, so, so on, on, on the actual um, INCs uh, submitted, I mean, only the, the first two or three raise, raise uh, quite important uh, issues, like, uh, for example, Switzerland says we can do this much without using international flexible mechanisms. 
30 or 35 percent cut. But we can do 50 if we are allowed to, to use international mechanisms. So that's one issue. EU says no net use of, uh, of international mechanisms. I can't recall the phrasing correctly, but, but it's, it's about that. Uh, we, well, we have signaled that we want to have joint fulfillment from Norway's side, so, so that's the same type of statement as, as the EU will, will have. Um, so that's one issue, I mean, what do people assume on, on mechanisms uh, um, on a net basis? Uh, will anyone be seeing themselves as sellers, for example? Um, another issue is uh, the LCF, and we have in the two submissions so far two different approaches. EU saying, well, we'll think about this, we don't really know yet. Uh, maybe I'm not fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but they need more time to, to think through uh, LUCF and agree on, on, on how to, 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 to put it into their contribution. Switzerland says Kyoto rules. Uh, US, we know that, we think we know that they will be quite close to what they announced uh, when they announced the agreement with, with China. And, and that's a third approach. That's, uh, <clears throat> that's the so-called net, net approach. So they subtract the, the figure from uh, LULUCF sector in 19, or in their base year, which is probably 2005. It's the third issue. Base years will differ. And, and, uh, and uh, they subtract in, in the target year. So, so that's, that, that would have changed our figures, for example, dramatically, because uh, we have so many trees per capita, and the dynamics of the trees are, are such that, I mean, half of uh, our emissions uh, could be seen as, uh, as, uh, as uh, absorbed by, 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 by the forest. So, so, I mean, there are many issues coming up only from these, and then we will probably have other INCs uh, specifying more. Like, like you mentioned, I mean, China may be coming out with a percentage of uh, renewables uh, as part of this. What does it mean? What does peaking mean? I mean, there is a lot of need for assessments uh, on this and, and, and trying to spread the understanding what does it actually mean and, and how is it fair and, uh, and how should it be perceived. Okay, I, I think I spoke for long enough, so thank you very much. And, uh,